So I'm actually, this is the first time I'm actually going to tell exactly what happened in the whole yeah. story. Okay. You know, they came back. So they came back then. I took up their brass and looked for the magazine. Wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. What? Hold, on, whoa, hold on. Whoa. Stop, stop. Time out. Wait. wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're telling me that the, that the bad guy isn't, like, the isn't like, isn't like a rule of thumb, like to never return to the scene of the crime. Our next guest on the CF podcast may not need an introduction if you've been paying attention to any Pro 2A news source or any news source for that matter willing to spread some truth. Vince Ritchie was unfortunately met at his doorway to his LA home where his wife and child also reside by two armed assailants. Fortunately enough, however, he did have his concealed carry weapon on him and he was able to stop the threat at that time. Another unfortunate stance is that this is in LA and the LA government has found it necessary to strip him of his Second Amendment right and also his concealed carry permit. Why, you ask? Good question. So let's go talk to the man himself and figure out this and more. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce Vince Ritchie. Welcome back to the CF Podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Clint. We've got Kaya back with us. What's up, guys? And we are out here at, uh, well, you'll definitely recognize the range here in just a little bit, but we're out here at Taryn Butler's range. Pretty interesting stuff. And he has invited uh, a new friend of ours, Vince Ritchie, correct? What's going on? Yeah. Vince, What's up, man? Dude, well, first of all, thank you so much for joining us. We're excited to hear your story because it's something that definitely blew up all over the news. I've seen and read the LA Times article on it, and we're going to be talking quite a bit so you guys can understand how much I preach about actually exercising your second member, yep. right? It's one thing to own a gun, but carrying a gun and then being able to you know, lawfully employ it is another thing. And for those of you that don't know, Vince was uh, recently you were in a self-defense situation and you had to draw your firearm and shoot, correct? Yeah. And um, if, if you don't mind, actually, just take us, you know, step by step what was happening. Because I know it was in the evening. I know you just got home and you were just kind of doing your thing. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you got these criminals coming up on you, right? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me on the show. Uh, it was a pleasure. Good to have you, man. Yeah, yeah dude. <clears throat> in such a legacy place like here, you know. TTI, man. Yeah, exactly. yeah stuff, All these cool yeah. things. This yeah. is great. I'm like, honored. Yeah. yeah I mean, really the Punisher am. and John Wick has trained here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Literally. Everybody's everybody, was yeah. everybody, Joe everybody, was everybody, yeah, yeah too. literally. Mm -hmm. Um, back to that, back to the story. I'm like an awe, you know what I mean? But yeah, I was coming home. I just I worked all day, went to the gym, literally went and got a cup of tea. Yeah, you know, super, Wait, where's home? Uh, Lodgemont, Lodgemont, in, uh, California, yeah, Cal Los Angeles, California. It's a yeah. quaint little village, and I was it's, it's so interesting because. I just recently started going to couples therapy with my wife, not because we have any issues, because she was like, oh, I want you to learn how to be a little more disarmed. Yeah. Not with her, but in general. Yeah. Right, right. You know what I mean? And being like uh, able to express things instead of just bottling it up. Yeah. You know, I buried both my parents. I've In the last couple of years, I've been through a decent amount growing up. And it's like, all right, instead of just like flushing things away, let's learn how to actually deal with it and talk about it. Or not that I want to do that, but at least... <laughs> Could I commend down. you for that, man. Yeah. I don't know why people look down on that stuff. That's, for, yeah. We can all be better. Yeah, I want to fall into yes. my feminine self. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let my hair down, dress up as a woman if I want. But, you know, who knows what's going to happen. No, I'm in the right place. I'm in the right place. Wait a minute, how long have well, you been in California? Yeah. It hasn't happened yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's growing on me, but yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I actually was doing that, and usually I get out of the car, all dog alert, all time, uh, born and raised in the Bronx, New York, you know, where any, anything Wait, happens. Wait, this is not a California accent? Yeah, so, no, yeah. I couldn't tell, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's, I thought yeah. this was a California thing. It's, it's, people think I have an Orange County accent, but it's not. <laughs> it's Bronx. But I'm usually paying attention. I hear something. I'm super vigilant. I don't know why I've actually been thinking about, all right, like, don't be so on. Don't be so, like, ready all the yeah. time and, like, mentally prepared. I get out of the car. I was just on a phone call with my sister. And immediately clicked back to the Sean Ryan show. It was either the Sean Ryan show or the Prince, mm -hmm. the Machiavelli book, mm -hmm. the yeah, Prince. Yeah. yeah, I was listening to. And when I got out of the car and I clicked on that, I was listening and I was contemplating: should I feed the plants? Because I was going to hose the yeah. plants down outside. And I'm thinking in my head: do I want to listen to my wife tell me about everything that went on at work today? I really don't want to hear about this right now. So let me just sit outside and relax. Yeah, and. Going to get my keys. I was like, oh, I'll put my key down and come back outside. And I fucking, at the last minute, see the reflection in the door. And the first thing I thought was, I can't believe you let this happen. Mm. I can't believe you let this happen. Yeah. You were so caught off guard. And that's when I was just like, 
going in the house wasn't going to happen. Letting them in the yeah. house. I had my wife, and, and we could relate. Our babies were born a day apart. Right. I had a, a just short of five-month-old baby upstairs. I just went to sleep, literally. Our nanny, uh, who I love, mm -hmm. she's part of our family, my, my wife's best friend, and my wife was sitting on the opposite side of that door within mm. three yards, not even, and right on the other side of a glass door. There was no way I was letting them in the house. No. Wait, okay, when they came at you, did they say anything? <clears throat> I, I don't really, mm -hmm. I, I, I can't really remember because it happened so fast. Gotcha. Like nothing like a stick them up or get in the house, or get, what, nothing. I mean, it was something. It wasn't. They were talking. Was, oh, yeah. Okay. But I also had the earpods on. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I reacted. I think he said to open the door. But it was like in a Hell threatening no. manner. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. I don't. I don't. I'll be honest yeah. with you. I can't remember exactly what was said. It was something to gesturing to go in the house. Well, he's got a gun in his hand, so yeah, yeah, a gun in my back. The other guy yeah. was pulling the gun out, and I was just the the thought of going in the house. There's a recent something happened a few years ago in California. That guy let him in the house, and then the pistol mm -hmm. whipping the guy and the wife ended up causing oh, like yeah. they have pictures of the guy's face. I'm not gonna let that happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what I don't think you guys even know. My house was robbed four months exactly prior, three and a half months prior to this. So you've, you're already in a situation where I, I totally understand your wife wanting you to kind of like decompress some, right? You, yeah. you, keep, you keep all this pent up energy. You keep all this head on the swivel type of mindset, constant like, all right, threats around, threats around, right? And I can understand how that would be mentally degrading over time and how that, how you could, you know, like sometimes you're just talking, you're taking the trash out. She asks you to do something. All right, I'm working on it. And it's like, oh, you know what? I didn't mean to. I was just I was in my zone. I was doing my thing, you know? And so I can understand why she'd want you to kind of like, all right, let's, let's go and just, let's relax. Right. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, four months prior, I think you said your, your house was broken into. It was literally two weeks after the baby was born. Mm. It was the first day we brought the baby to work. We worked together, me and my wife. She's the director of Hubble. And, we had a crib set up in the office. We we're like, oh, well, we're going to bring the baby to work. Mm -hmm. And it'll be great. Yeah. It's our family. A dog comes with us. A husky comes with us. Everybody. The first day we're there, I'm in the, I'm in the other office with the team. And she yells, the alarm's going off. And then she yells, the fucking, ba oh, sorry, the baby monitor went off. And I'm like, what? And then she's like, there's people in the house. Like, go. Oh, my God. And I run outside, mm -hmm. get in a car. I get from downtown to Largemont. Granted, I don't think it's the LAPD's fault. I think it's it's the dispatch from from nine one one because I've accepted these type of things. And at first, I was I was a little disgusted with the LAPD, but it's not them because now I'm starting to learn a little more from other calls when the call comes in to when the dispatch actually goes out. What well, call comes in? The call taker takes it and starts talking, and then call taker sends it to dispatcher. Yeah. Well, this oh, guy so, was a dispatcher so, right here, so too. So I worked at a much smaller, oh, yeah. smaller <clears throat> community and smaller um, agency, right? So I mean, well, agency, but, you know, it was a, uh, a local law enforcement out of Cornelius, North Carolina, is where I took 911 calls and dispatch. So we're small. I mean, it's literally just two people in a room. Yeah. And we take the call and dispatch the call. So we're the direct line oh, so from, from the call taker or yeah. from, from the caller uh, to the police officers. to the actual yeah. officer right and so we don't have like this big call facility or call mm -hmm. center where a call comes in then the call taker delivers that information to the dispatcher yeah. then the dispatcher delivers it to the officer i can understand maybe in larger areas you might need that that's how it was my area. pd and yeah. i'm sure the lapd is the same even more sophisticated for right. sure but but yeah. i will say that you know, you got your multitasking's got to be on a whole different level whenever yeah. you're taking the call, listening to the panic over yeah. here, and then trying to translate that yeah. that panic, ma'am, sir, hey, calm down. I need you to clarify right now. Give yeah. me a description. Give me an address. What's going on? You know, who, what weapon, mm -hmm. right? And uh, all that type of fun stuff. And so now they're trying to do all of that uh, for the for the break in, right? Yeah. And so now all of a sudden there's this there's this delay from the call taker to the dispatcher. Yeah. And so that's something that maybe some of these different, you know, organizations, PDs, agencies, whatever you want to call them, that might be able to pay attention to because No, they have to. They, yeah. They might there was a robbery happened two days ago, a good friend of mine. The call came in at twelve twenty two. The dispatch didn't go out till twelve thirty six. The guys oh, were done. in the house until yeah. twelve thirty yeah. four. Yeah. The cops were there in four and a half minutes. Yeah. No, it, that that and delay. there's five guys with guns in the house. Yeah. So when calls come in, they're pri prioritized. Yeah, they always are. So if there's an imminent danger to people, like if you say, "Hey, I'm sure that dispatch again, a former, I, I got to learn a few things. I'm sure that dispatch asked, 
well, anybody in the house? No, I'm not. I'm watching the camera. They're in there. Boom, that priority is down. Yeah, yeah, we, we, t- we prioritize down. the calls. Exactly. exactly so that's know? why it gets dispatched later because there's calls pending. And I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but that's probably yeah. what happened based on what you're telling me. Let's get back to the, to the story a little bit, though, because we want to talk about that also. Yeah. yeah. You know, because so, so we've, what, what we've already learned, though, is that <laughs> there, is a, there is an issue. There's a, yeah. There is an issue in, in, in law enforcement, ultimately. Yeah. And so four months prior to you ultimately having armed attackers uh, trying to make their way into your home, your house was already broken into once. Do you, do you think possibly? Maybe well, actually, sent- actually twice. Tw- oh, it, ha- it, happened, it happened the first month they moved in. Oh, my God. Last September. And then have it again in June. Well, technically, it wasn't also just your house. It's California, so it's everybody's property. Yeah, yeah. But that's not normal. Yeah. But yeah, but no, you're right. Yeah, I know. You want to what? Because all my neighbors, they're so they're so supportive. Yeah. They all come out and they support me. And they're like, oh, we've been robbed too. Don't worry about it. I'm like, <laughs> you know that's not normal, right? Yeah, right. right. Like, yeah. They don't worry about it? Like, no, no, no. I'm pretty fucking worried about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. That doesn't make me feel yeah. No, <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. So anyway, so your house yeah. has been broken into twice within the time that you've been living in it. Uh, and then the, the most recent time was four months prior to the time that you've had armed attackers come into your doorstep. Yeah. So you exit your vehicle. Let's let's get down to the nitty gritty now. Play by play. You exit your vehicle. What's next? I get out of the car. I woke up. I had my phone on. I had my earpods on, which I'll never make that mistake again for the viewers. Don't walk in your house with your earpods on. No, yeah. I, I like to say <clears throat> just people when they go out running. I, I've got earpods too. I, I keep the transparency on all the time. So that yeah. way I'm just aware of what's going yeah. on around me. And I can listen to what I'm listening to, Sean Ryan show probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, be, be happy with that. So anyway, you exit your vehicle, AirPods on the phone. Get Go to my house, get up to the door at the last minute and I see a person running up. But I was supposed to go on a uh, run with my buddy. He wanted to go run four miles. So I was like, all right, let's go for a run. I thought it was him coming up. I was going to eat real quick and then go for a run if he came a little earlier. Oh. I was like, cool. So I turn around. I was going to be like, how are you doing running yeah. like that? <clears throat> and when I look up and I see the mask, I was like, oh, I don't know. I can't believe it. And my initial adrenal response to it was, I guess, my sympathetic nervous system yeah. kicked in. Now I'm, I'm listening to the book on combat. So it's about that. Um, if you listen to it. Uh, well, uh, uh, Lieutenant uh, Colonel. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, why can I not remember his name? But on combat, on killing Grossman or something Great. like that. Yeah. Uh, my, another instructor, Mike O'Dowd, he was the one who put me onto the book, uh, Ex Navy SEAL. He's the best. And. It's about your sympathetic nervous system. Everything sh- goes right to you, and you respond immediately. And it's, it's like from the spinal cord. Yeah, That's, it comes re- initially is not from the brain. The initial response is always from the spinal cord. That's your reflexes, yeah. right? When something happens, you just turn around like that, and then the adrenaline uh, dump, the ATP into your muscles, and all that stuff to keep you in the fight. And that comes from the way back in the day, the yeah. hunter gatherer times, where th- all that stuff happens afterwards, so you can continue the fight. Yeah. So, but initially, it's like that spinal cord response reflex, and, and that's what you did. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. Yeah. Now, now that I'm learning about more, because I'm like, all right, cool. Well, I, I like to get educated and move forward on yeah. different situations, whether or not I become a more proficient shooter or mm-hmm. learn about your, your response system and how it triggers those things. Everything slowed down. Like when I watched back the video, I thought mm-hmm. it was going to be. Three minutes. Yeah. It was seventeen seconds. It's it was so fast. Yeah. It was so fast. I turned around. I looked at them. I said, "Oh, this guy's got me." I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" I was immediately hard on myself and said, "Like, I can't believe what this That's happened." Like, blah blah yeah. blah. And then the next thought was, "There was no way I'm letting them in my house." Absolutely not. With my kids, no. with my kid and my wife, and she's she's the best thing in the world. She's like, she's such a sweetheart. Like, she's so like, just not timid, but like gentle mm. that I immediately went to like, no, I'm this is this, this, you're gonna have to kill me in this doorway yeah. before you get through this door. And then when I hit him with a T, I went to try to grab the gun. I for a second I thought that we gonna I was gonna be able to physically chase them off mm-hmm. without actually having to draw my weapon. Because I didn't want to initially go right to draw my weapon because I also didn't want to get nailed before I could even yeah. be in a fight. When I seen the other guy get his gun out of his hoodie and then this one turning back around, which a lot of people interpret the video as they were running. They weren't running. They were turning around. It's yeah. actually called tactical maneuvering, which you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. to avoid getting hit with hot tea. And <laughs> and I think their, their, their initial response to my aggression was probably they got a little nervous. And when he turned around the fire, I said, 
I'm going to get shot anyway. I might as well just mm -hmm. pull, just go for it. Go for it now mm -hmm. because it, it's it's on. They're going to kill me right here in the doorway, or they're going to shoot me a few times in the legs and, and go in my house. Yeah, and I'm like, whatever. It this is what it is. It's mm -hmm. over. And I kind of at that point, like you hear in movies when you're like, oh, I accept like Black Hawk Down. I accept that I was going to die, so I was in the fight like that. Right. And sometimes is it is it theatrical? Is it but people are just like kind of embellish it? No. It was so slow that I knew that I was going to get killed. Yeah. And I was like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we started shooting. Uh, this guy fired, and the other guy you could see as he turned back, he fired. I can't tell if he fired twice or once. And then after I let off, a few, I let off, I think it was four or six rounds. We've counted it twice, but the video like jumps. Yeah. And the minute I backed them up, I knew I had to get out of that death tunnel, the oh, fatal tunnel. Yeah, I yeah, had, had to get to. out of there. You know what I mean? If anybody's watched the video. I turned, ran, got to cover, and a lot of people in the video like, oh, you're pursuing them. I'm not pursuing them. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to get to cover. Again, like you said, it's it's tactical maneuvering at this sense because you're, yeah. looking, you're looking for cover, right? You're looking for cover because these guys have already drawn their guns and started shooting. Yeah. Right? And so you're going to stay, and, and again, this is for people that have no idea. You're in that fatal funnel. You're <clears> literally... Uh, bullets are going down a hallway to you, right? Yeah. It makes it very easy. Like, oh, I don't have to look for this guy. I just know I need to aim for the center of this doorway. Yeah. Because that's where you were. That's very <laughs> easy to the mind. And now all of a sudden, and this is why we preach too, and why you've made good training points. Hey, when you do your reloads or anything like, get off the X. Get, move. Because, yeah. you know, you, you like Fatal Funnel is a great point, right? Because that's where people always aim and they'll make a hit pretty much. And almost anybody will. But you also want to get away from the X from your last known position. Yes. You just got into a gunfight. Bang, 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 bang. Move. Yeah. If you don't move, even if the bad guy just loses you for a second, he's going to, when he re-engages you, he's going to re-engage you at your last known position. But if you're not there, boom, you flanked him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So So now, now you're behind cover. Yeah. Well, yeah. Back, back, it's funny. Back to what you said. When I let off my first few shots, I knew he was moving. I stepped to the left immediately yeah. and started firing again. Uh, more from a boxing technique. Yeah. Of, oh, I of see. Constantly slipping. Yeah. You know what I mean? And stepping in and one inch matters. You yeah. know what I mean? An yeah. inch or two matters. It and makes a big difference. Let's put a pin in that because I'd love to talk about martial arts and other forms of combat, whether it be hand to hand and things like that, and how that played a part in your self defense situation. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so we'll go back to, to me. I, I ran the cover. Yeah. yeah. From a buddy who was a ranger in Iraq. Uh, a friend of mine, Rob, and he had, I asked him one time in a firefight, what do you do? He said, first, run. Yeah. <laughs> or get to cover. Get to yeah. cover. You know what I mean? You have to get to cover and mm -hmm. you have to start, you have to move and shoot and that's how you stay alive. And Tim Kennedy says it, like you have to be mobile to yeah. move and shoot. Well, that's what we're taught in the Marines too. I mean, we're, uh, the moment you get contact, you yell, at, you yell, contact left, contact right, front, rear, whatever, you drop. Right, you immediately drop. You run. You get to cover. You you get to you make yourself as low as small of a target as possible, mm -hmm. and you engage the threat. You know, so these are the first things you got to do. Sometimes, hey, if you're ambushed, you know, like like what you are in this situation, you just kind of take it for what it is, and you you've made up that mental. Your fight or flight has already kicked in, and it's fight because where where are you going to fly to inside the house where your family is? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. So now the fight the fight's been made up, the fight decision's been made up, and that's what you're doing. And so yeah, the movement is. It's critical. Yeah, you have to you have to move. And that was it's funny because everything I guess part of that that adrenal response, sympathetic response is that everything I've ever learned all kicked in at one time. Like That's, every yeah. single piece of, of training, my friend Chance, who's a federal agent, walked me through how to maneuver, how to draw from concealment, how to do certain things, and he was the first one to do it. And like all of those things all kicked in at once. And it's it's not saying like I'm downplaying myself, but people out there that should be carrying should know you will be able to handle the situation. Mm -hmm. It's life or death. It's going to happen. Right. Yeah, I mean, and when it happens, and it's happening more often than not now in a lot of these metropolitan cities, you will be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. Or you better have a better shot of surviving if you attempt to defend well, yourself. Well, you did. You moved to that cover that's yeah. exactly where we left off, but you moved to that cover. That's, uh, I understand, instinctive too, but you train. You could tell. You moved out of the X, and you return fire, obviously. That's mindset, which we'll get to, as Clint was talking about. That's mindset, man. And then you move to cover and continue 
to kind of be vigilant and see where they're at uh, and engage if necessary and stuff. So I could just tell that uh, you, you were trained. Yeah. I watched that video. I could tell that you had some sort of uh, training and that was good to watch. But yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, do, do you have any military law enforcement background? No. No. And that's, that's something I want to reiterate too to anybody watching. You don't have to be some Navy SEAL. <laughs> To fight off multiple attackers. I'm not a Navy SEAL, bro. Yeah, trust you know. me, I can handle myself. Like, as in, as in I've trained enough, mm -hmm. and you can too. Like, you don't have to be a Navy well, SEAL yeah, or, or a Green Beret. Beret. You know what I mean? Or what, law I'm, what I'm saying, though, is like, you know, you and I both have experiences in, in military, you law enforcement, you know, yeah. and uh, but you don't have to have this background in order to go ahead and seek that. Or know yourself. See, this is something that the Marines say. Know yourself and seek improvement, right? And something that, that you knew was, hey, <laughs> evil exists. This is something I preach all the yeah. time. Evil exists. How am I going to how am I gonna, how am I going to counter that evil if it ever meets me at my door? Yeah. And it literally met you at your door. Right and, at my door. Yeah. Literally. The worst possible place. Yeah. And people talk about like, you know, people go in law enforcement, they go to work, they have a they get into a shootout. That's it, which yeah. doesn't happen. But they get to go home. You know, or people go they deploy overseas. My combat happened at my doorstep. So I have to walk through this <laughs> every single day. Yeah. And I'm not broken at all. Trust me. Like, I probably, I'm happy that it happened to me and not a thousand of my neighbors around me because I can handle it. Mm -hmm. But it's like, oh, at one point, is it going to like, at what point is it going to get normal? I was talking to my wife last night and I said, you know, it's never, it's never normal here. It's not just a regular robbery. No. I had to get shot at. And then her friend goes, well, you did also get robbed regularly four <laughs> yeah, months before that. She was like, well, so, like, you know. That's normal. It yeah. happens to all yeah. of us. Yeah. Yeah. But she yeah. said it like laughing, like, yeah. well, you had the normal one. Now you just yeah. had to get it a little more exciting. Yeah. So you, you're behind that car. What else is going through your head, and what else is happening? Then? How many rounds do I have left? That's, that's the first thing that is, is mine. Bro, I, I swear, that's something that I, like, get scared about. And then here in California, they want to limit <laughs> They want to limit yeah. what, well, what, what they deem be necessary for self-defense, right? Yep. Okay, cool. So you're limited to 10 rounds, right? Yeah, you're limited to 10 rounds in a clip. I didn't have an extra magazine. Mm. Uh, anybody carrying any, going forward, carrying an extra magazine, at least in your car, so you can put it in your pocket on the yeah. way into the house because you don't know what's going to happen. I, I let off. I was counting my rounds. I was going not like one, two, three, but like con Just consciously knowing guess. don't run out of ammunition because the last thing I wanted them to hear me run out of ammunition. Right, right. I don't know how many people there are. I only see two. I know there's not two. Yeah. If they come in for a home invasion, there's either two more waiting and then there's yeah. a driver. Who knows if this guy's going to get out of the car because that's his brother or right. something going on. You know what I mean? And I, I looked down, pulled the chain back, seen I had one, one in the head and I pulled the uh, magazine out and you could only see the fifth bullet. Yeah. With the circle, but I felt it in my hand. They said I got one or two left in the magazine. I can uh, training, 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 training. Because there's there's points where you get to. I know where I'm just running drills at the range. I'm like, oh, my mag's gonna run empty here in just a minute. Yeah. You know, like if I keep if I keep shooting at this sustained fire, I know I got probably about maybe three or four trigger pulls. And it's yeah. not exact, but I know. I shoot so much that I yeah. know, right? Yeah. And then and then on top of that, you get to feel like you popped your mag out like, okay, cool. I can tell by the weight. I don't need to look at the round count indicator. I can tell by the weight that, all right, cool. I got probably about one or two. Yeah. Most mags don't have a one or two count anyway. You can just look. But at this point, you're so, you're, dude, <laughs> the stress and everything else that you're, you're probably, what do you mean, what do you remember seeing? Because that's probably something yeah. that, you know, I think about, like, I might remember seeing bullet, mag, black figure, gun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hands, okay, cool, on gun. <clears throat> you know, like, at this point, what do you remember seeing? When I ducked down? Yeah. I knew that there was nobody coming up from behind me, and I knew that they didn't know where I was. Mm. So I was like, all right, I'm good right here for a second. Let me check the magazine, but I knew that I had to move. Right. Seen the other guy go over the fence, but I heard all the noise by the gate, so I'm like, there's definitely somebody in the backyard, or there's definitely somebody in the side. I had two shots. But it's ironically, I was really calm. No, yeah. not saying it like, oh, it was calm. I could handle this. You know what I mean? Like that happens every day. No, you, you know just I mean? were in a better tactical position. That yeah, gave, gave you I some calmed. I yeah. felt like this. I won round one. Yeah, and I was like, oh, oh man, like I won the first round. Yeah, and I, and I but I accepted. There's definitely no way I'm going to get out of this without getting shot. Because there's, yeah. he went over the fence shooting. The other guy that ran, he started shooting as he was running. I don't know if they're shooting at me or they're shooting. I found the shells all in the street. I think we found seven shells in the street. 
but there was more gunfire going off in other places as I was checking the magazine. At the time, yeah, I knew I was in a pretty good position not to get hit. Yeah. And I could see what's going on, but I also did accept like one of these might just clip me right in the side of the head and lights out. You know what I mean? That's all it takes. I don't I don't know who's gonna I don't know how many people is it five people here? Is it seven people here right. with guns like i don't know i just hear yeah. a lot of gunfire and you've got only a couple rounds left i have yeah. a couple rounds left and I had a knife your mindset again i mean first of all i, I applaud you because we all want to say that we probably would act like what you did <laughs> yeah. in the in this type of situation and i and i feel myself getting emotional too because you know i keep pretty private about my private life but i'll, I'll admit here that yeah you you had a daughter born a day before my twin son and daughter were born this year yeah and i am thinking we are in such similar situations like that because I got my fiance in the house, my kids in the house. There's no way, no way, dude. I have said so mm-hmm. many times, I want what I deem necessary to be the most effective tool to protect me and those that I love and care for. Right. And policymakers, I'm going to say it right here. might be a bold statement. They are trying to kill you because they're saying, Hey, you're limited to 10 rounds. Cause that's what we deem would be necessary to protect you and yours while they're over there defended by multiple who knows bodyguards carrying whatever the hell they please but you your life isn't as important as theirs policymakers are trying to kill you and i'm and i'm willing to to die on that hill no it's Mm. it's it's crazy i went to a council meeting recently and the woman said well i said well why didn't they talk about the crime that's why everybody's here the woman came up after the mayor went up and spoke and said who's here for crime the whole the whole audience raised their hand yeah and they were like i know homelessness is an issue and I know that we have to deal with it. But she tried to tell me, oh, homelessness is just as important as your issue. I said, oh, get away Jesus from me. Christ. Get that really? away from me. Yeah. I said, oh, get it, a father getting shot at in front of his house at his doorway. And they haven't arrested them. Mm-hmm. And So that's what I wanted to get. Oh, Dude, yeah. That, really, yeah. this is there. literally what I wanted to get. But before I get there, man, and everybody, yeah, we have an update for you on these uh, criminals' uh, status. We as, of, as of as of this date, recording right now, it's November 29th. Exactly. Yeah. So what I want to know is this. When you first got into that shooting, you said time slow down, which we have uh, heard that many, many mm-hmm. times. I've, I can attest that myself. Mm-hmm. Um, did you have any auditory exclusion or did you hear every single shot from the very first? I don't. Everybody keeps asking me, did I did my ears hurt? No. Mm-hmm. Zero. Did you hear the shots? Auditory exclusion. Did you hear maybe their shots? Did I heard. I shots? heard all of our shots. I was fully aware of the gunfire, but at that point, it was so regular. It wasn't yeah. like when you walk in a range without ear protection. No. And you're like, boom, boom. You're like, oh, oh so that sucks. I mean? yeah. Like adrenaline is a whole like, thing. Shooting here, shooting here. Like they're shooting. This guy's shooting from over here. Like where are these people? Like in my head, like it was yeah. like just a sensory okay. came in of. Like I said, I, I feel myself getting emotional because I'm imagining myself mm-hmm. in your situation looking. I, my kids, ha- their, their, their faces are burned in my brain. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so is my fiance's. And I'm just thinking, I'm not letting anything. Like you, you are going to have to kill me, right? And you, you, you live by that. Yeah. And you prove that. And that's that's incredible. And let's talk about that pin now that, that I talked about a little bit earlier. You've how, how you said you had a boxing history. Yeah, I trained uh, with this guy Aaron Davis. He was a world champion in the early nineties. He beat Mark Breland. He's, he's a monster. He was the best boxing coach I've ever had. I've had a lot of the boxing coaches. They were great, but he, Aaron was the best. And he he had a gym full of fighters. And to train there and fight there and to be there, you had to be the best possible version of yourself. We never trained with music on. We didn't do certain. He trained fighters. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like an old school trainer. Like, you had to fight. And it was the best experience in years of my life was there because everything I do now is dictated off of the training I had there and training from Aaron and and that type of stuff because, you know, one inch makes a difference. Stepping to the left, one inch will be the difference between getting dropped and skimming right off the side yeah. of your face. You know what I mean? Just how you move, how you react to certain situations and be able to slow things down and handle certain situations. Be able to return fire with fire, punch when somebody's punching. You yes. know what I mean? Like, it's scary, but you got to yeah. do it. You when, know? when I teach a new shooter how to shoot, right, somebody, and this is why I want to talk about 
how different fi- different styles of combat, whether or, or different implementations of combat, whether it be hand to hand, martial arts, boxing, whatever it might be, and how it all comes together, right? Because I say, hey, get into a basic fighting stance. Like, how would you throw a punch, right? Like, get your arms up and everything else. Cool. Hold a gun. Now, don't move your feet. (laughs) Don't do anything else like that. Lean a little bit forward at the hips so that way you can take that punch if you need to, but you can also counter, right? That's you accepting that recoil. Now going ahead and setting another round to get that follow-up shot, right? And that's how I I teach it, right? And and that's something that I think it's so easy to translate from hand-to-hand combat to shooting and the and the art of you know war at this at, in the essence of it you know and so 100%. so for how long have you been i'm sorry i missed that how long have you been you know practicing boxing all that stuff i mean but i was spent about 5 years really in the gym with him a couple of the years fooling around in and out of the yeah. gym before that fooling around but like those handful of those 5 years like lived in the gym yeah. like i was there every day you know what i mean like i it was part of my life i ran 5 miles a day i did yeah. everything i had yeah. to do for that and Still, like, I still jump rope. I still shadow box all the time. I jump rope four nights a week, you know. I'm always shadow boxing my jump rope mm-hmm. just to stay sharp and vigilant and be able to maneuver and move. You know, I'm dropping weight right now yeah. just to stay yeah. in a better boxing weight, even though I'm not fighting anybody. You know what I mean? But well, are you, are you not? Yeah, I, so, my, my I life think, is, you know what I mean? It's I think you day, were. You know. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so physical fitness is something that need not be slept on. You know, uh, that's something, you know, we, we host live streams, yeah. things like that too, and I say it all the time. You know, I got like my, my A's that I live by, stay ammos, stay ammoed up, stay armed up, stay armored up, and stay agile. Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like these are things that I think you should live by because at any point in time, <laughs> life and death can come at you, right? Like I said, evil exists. How are you going to counter how are you going to defeat this overwhelming evil potentially? You got to overwhelm it with more violence of action, and and I like to say hate. Some people are like, oh, you shouldn't carry hate in your heart. I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. Do you, do you, do you think <laughs> in that moment you hated those individuals for trying to get through you to your family? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah. ever, and people yeah. like will say, oh, well, will I be capable of using a gun? Would I be capable in that mm-hmm. situation? And I'm like, oh, I, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, absolutely dep- capable, yeah. dude. I. The interviews that I see on social media sometimes, they are asking moms, would you kill for your child? And so many people are saying, no, I don't think I would. And it's like, what society are we living in right yeah, now? Yeah, they shouldn't be allowed what? to reproduce. Dude, but, um, well, and this, yeah. is, this yeah. is where we're at. And this is the, de- I mean, put it this way. When you got this thing called quote unquote toxic masculinity, yeah. they would consider what you were doing being, you know, fighting, boxing, stuff like that. Me and my friends, we used to put on gloves and just go fight too. And that's such a learning thing. Yeah. Right, just do it. There's no hate. There's nothing there. It's all good and fun, dude. It right? goes a long way. Like you, okay, you go get a firearm today, and I advocate that to everybody. I'm a believer in the Second Amendment. I've I love guns, man. They're great for protection, right? I've seen what people who weren't armed, yeah. what happens to them. So if you go get a gun, and you get your CCW, right, which is an extremely minimal qualification requirements for that, right? And if you only did that, I've got bad news for you, brother. Or yeah, sister, that's, that's not you are. That's nothing. So, with you, Vince, like I can, I watched that video numerous times, man. And now you're here, and I get to know you a little bit. We chatted before the podcast. You've got a fighter mindset because you are a fighter. Okay, so when those guys came at you, and I know things times slow down for you. You watched the video later, I'm sure too, how fast that happened, and things do happen fast. That's why when I was talking about the police dispatch thing, even if they dispatched that thing instantly, instantly and yeah. if that cop was yeah. a block away the situation was still over. So you really, nobody takes care of you better than you. And you've got that fighter mindset because you are. When those guys came at you, your instinct was to fight. But not everybody has that. People just go get a gun or without a gun, like those moms you were talking about, they just freeze. So the fight, actually, the fight or flight that we talked about, there's two survival systems, there's actually five. Fight, flight, bluff, freeze, and submit. Yep. Those, these are the five ones. And a lot of people freeze and submit. Mm. Like, you know, there's fight. Uh, flight happens all the time, but people in your situation, oh, okay, just okay, like, okay, 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 what's going on? They, yeah. That's what they do. But you, you weren't that because that's your boxing. I got to give that to you. Like, that's your high level of fitness, boxing. That created that mindset. But at the same time, you're talking about your federal agent friend, your detective friend, where you train yourself as a civilian who a responsible gun owner let's just say you train yourself all that stuff put together made you win that fight man oh I yeah mean, everything I mean in my life that i've learned that i've experienced came together that moment and kept me alive yeah right 
and all the things in my life pulled little pieces of like like a movie when you like to watch a flash from this memory, that memory, that memory, and like all came together to be like, do this, go left, do that. And I was like, and when I came through the door, I immediately took my shirt off because I thought I had gotten shot. Oh, so you're checking for bleeds. Yeah. I, I took my shirt off because yeah. like, there's no way I didn't right. get shot. Right. And maybe I didn't feel it. And I actually felt my legs up and down the inside. I won't take my pants off. But I was, I didn't get shot. Yeah. I, I couldn't, I couldn't, I said to my wife, I said, oh my God, I didn't get shot. And then I turned, I told the friend Marissa, load my shotgun. I came back, she couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was just all, I immediately had to go back outside to right. go into the fight. Not because yeah. I was going to look for them, but I was still protecting my home. Right, dude. You don't know 100%. what the threat is at this point. Until, like, yeah. I mean, dude, you got to keep that situational awareness up. And, you know, and, and I understand why, you're, why your wife would want you to be like, hey, just calm down a little bit. But staying vigilant and keeping your situational awareness up is something that we have to do because, like I said, so many times already, evil exists. And you got to be on the lookout for it, right? And it's, and it's, I, I can only understand, like, only imagine what the relief was when you're like, yeah. Oh shit! All right, cool. I'm <laughs> made yeah. out ultimately unscathed, other than you know having that that memory of being. I think probably what hurt you the most was I let this happen. Yeah, and I, that's yeah. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you said it from the very beginning. The moment it happened, your first thought was you're beating yourself up like I let this happen. Like yeah. I didn't see this asshole coming, and thank God you saw it in the reflection. You know, because yeah. if he would have had the gun in your back or something like that. I oh, mean, he I, did have the gun in my back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he did. He did point <laughs> yeah. it. He literally well, saying, came in and just like. And you said you were just going to go water your plants, right? Like you're yeah. just getting out of your car. I'm going to go water my plants, whatever. Have a good day, you know. And then you got you got that one up. You know, you saw the reflection and you and your fight or flight kicked in yeah. of the five. Yeah. And your fight kicked in. And it's like, I'm not letting this asshole take me so easy because I yeah. love what's behind me right now. I love what's in this doorway. Dude, did you think. Like people who are listening right now, they always watch and hear these stories in their little comfortable, cozy living room because they think it's never going to happen to them. Right. Did you think this was going to happen to you? Somebody's going to put a gun to your well, back and I mean, do the, all the, that the stuff? Two, the two I understand burglars. the burglars. Like yeah. bur- burglary, I understand. But yeah. I'm talking about this close quarter, like this combat. This like People don't think this is going to happen to them. You, we train for it. Yeah. But we think it's not going to happen to us. Well, me, me, on the other hand, my, my life has not panned out always so easy. You know, it, it's been like, well, if something bad has happened, it happens to me. You know, I'm the guy <laughs> happens to where I'm like, yeah. Murphy, Murphy follows you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where I, you know, I've walked through life pretty unscathed in a sense that a lot of wild stuff has happened and I'm still here. So mm-hmm. I hope God has a plan, mm-hmm. you know, it's yeah. something great. You know, and if, if this is it to push yeah. people to, to activate their rights as Americans, to activate their rights as Second Amendment holders, to go get your concealed carry and fight for it, and to push back on the, sh- on the sheriff to say, hey, That's you got to give it back to me. Mm-hmm. you got to give it back to me. It, 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 it is a lose-lose situation for you guys because you're leaving a father out there unarmed. And, and to push this narrative of people need to stop having this sissy, submissive mentality right. because you're only in... in empowering and thralling these criminals, these savages, to keep coming out and doing these things. It's opportunity crimes. Crimes mm-hmm. of opportunity. That's right. They're going to keep doing it. So if anything I took from this was the ability to now speak up and say, people, you need to protect yourself. You may not even like guns. Go get trained on them. You'll be more comfortable with them. Yep. No. Go shoot. You'll be more comfortable. Learn what they could do. You'll be more comfortable. And you'll learn to love them. And then they're a tool. I don't, right. use, I don't use my adjustable wrench all the time. Mm-hmm. It sits in yeah. my tool bag, though. Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about now the the what's what's happened yeah. afterwards, right? So because some people might not even know this, but you used your firearm li- lawfully in a defensive situation, right? Yeah. And the government, your local government, has decided ah, we can't have that happening. What's what's going on right they now? It disarmed you. So I'm actually this is the first time I'm actually going to tell exactly what happened in the whole yeah. story. Okay. You know, when the cast my house was robbed originally. Well, the second time. So the previous time. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, know, you, get, you lost count to California, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was, they robbed my firearm. But that was a firearm that was on my CCW application. At the time, I didn't have one. So I had a two-week-old baby. My house was just robbed. They took your gun. They took my gun. I Two days later, I remember that... Uh, I have a CCW application. Let me email the guy and tell him I had an incident. I emailed the head of the CCW unit. I said, hey, I had an incident. Sorry. I had an incident, 
and could you call me back, please? But they're so difficult. They don't. There's no phone number. That and if there is, if you find one, no one's answering it. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there nine million applications, which I understand. The guy didn't see the email. It's fine. Mind you, a month later, I get approved. You know, you had a month old baby. Yeah. How is it? Mm-hmm. Your nights are not sleeping. No, I had just gotten robbed. No. I think I saw plywood <laughs> up on the back. Yeah. I started to laugh when they approved me. I had already replaced the gun with the same exact gun. You know, I'm not a sheriff. I'm not a CCW expert. When I went and picked it up, I was talking to them. It was a little frustrating because when I went to pick it up, they actually canceled. And I was like, guys, I took off work to come here, so I had to come back. Oh, I come back. I get the, the ID. Glock 26, fine. I didn't even remember at that point that the serial number was different because I replaced the gun. Because yeah. so much was going on. Oh, I get it. <laughs> so, but here's the thing is, I did contact them. Mm-hmm. So they said that I never reached out and contacted them. I did. You got, they, you they got the receipt to back. prove it. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. when they originally spoke to me about it, I forgot that yeah. I had emailed them. And then I'm going through my email. I said, I did contact this guy. Mm-hmm. And I sent it to him. I said, hey, I contacted you guys. Yeah. I did everything I was supposed to do. Even after he said... They called me and said, you never contacted us when you had an altercation. I said, no, I'm working hand-in-hand hand with a detective in law enforcement. The whole world mm-hmm. knows. It's yeah. not like they said, well, you have to call the CCW department. I said, in the class, it was put the, gun in the, put the gun in a safe place. I went inside, locked it up, called law enforcement. I started working with law enforcement. I said, hey, I'm a CCW holder. This is my firearm. This is, I, I was fully transparent with everything that went on. I did the best of my ability, which I think the sheriff should hear this and the whole world should hear this, is that, you know, I'm not getting to shootouts on the regular <laughs> where yeah. I'm in a low heart rate mode where I could handle, like, oh, I know exactly what to do. I handled it to my best of my abilities. And the best of my abilities was to contact law enforcement. And there was never a time where I didn't contact them. So whether I contacted the wrong guy or he didn't answer or whatever yeah. the case may be, they're like, oh, well, you know, we're going to suspend you and do investigation. I say, listen, please, it is a critical moment for me to be able to protect my family. These yeah. people are not, they're at large. Mm-hmm. This is multiple times my house has been robbed. My cars have been broken into three times. People, My house is a target. It's not my house, it's California. Yeah, yeah, and but you could be retaliated against too because you did Exactly, because like, yeah. I shot one of them. So he said, okay, we'll get back to them. They called me back, you're revoked. Jesus. And I said, why? He said, well, you know, you said some not nice things to the police. I said, off. Is that, said, is that are you a serious? crime? Is that, I mean, you said is that, some not nice. All right. What is that? Anything you communicated threatening? No. Yeah. Okay. So your First Amendment now doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. Cool. But, so, and I said, listen, it was just them just looking for a reason. I said, guys, I fully support the police department. I actually have an email in July, the day after I got my CCW, emailing the sheriff back and saying, hey, you are a pleasure to deal with because the woman who helped me was so nice and so helpful. And I said, is there anything I could do in return? I do police appreciation days where we bring the in and out truck. I bring my whole staff. Mm-hmm. We get the community involved with the police department. Then we invite them down to our Trina's Kids Foundation days where we give back to the community. And I say, hey, like this, this, this shortens the tether. I mean, we tighten the tether between the community and the police department. And I feel like that's something like I'm obligated to do. Just wanted to be a good member of society. I emailed, we emailed back and forth. She said she'll get back to me. She never did. I think she got busy. But it's not like I'm not trying to reach out. It's not like I'm not want to work with you guys. So even if I was mad on the day of the burglary and I yelled at one of the officers, who cares? Right. Who, who cares? That's I'm a not- frustrated father. My house was just broken into. You guys took 20-something minutes to get here, which is not your fault. Right, right, and I right. want to go on the record saying that I was frustrated. People are allowed to be frustrated sometimes. As long as I didn't threaten anybody, and yeah, especially when anybody. you're a victim of a crime like that. But that's this. not a reason <laughs> to take somebody's CCW, obviously. I mean, I, that's that's even more of a reason <laughs> to let them have their no, CCW. No, exactly. But I'm talking about ego, right? Because it's, it's all from, ego. It's all ego. And any any police officers, anybody who's listening to me right now, did leave your ego aside. I've seen that, and I'm gonna be. I'm gonna admit that I've done it, like on a very very small scale, nothing like that, where you get upset with somebody. Somebody says, "Oh, go screw yourself." Now you want to? What's your name? Like you do that, and I'm not proud of some of that stuff. But, dude, leave your ego aside. People's lives are at stake. You affect their lives for the rest of their lives, basically, with your ego. Yep. Just, I understand we all, we're not robots. I understand police officers aren't robots. They got emotions, too. But leave that ego aside. Oh, so you said a couple of not nice things to cops. Therefore, you know what? Let's see how we can 
angle this up and screw this guy over. Just don't be that guy, man. That's that's not what law enforcement is for. Don't yeah. be that and guy. I just got shot at. Yeah, I had just got shot at, and I'm yeah. and I'm arguing with one of the other cops that way. That was a younger cop, and then yeah. the other cop was shaking my hand, and he was the man. I even told him, "Thank you so much. Like, I really yeah. appreciate you trying." Back to the the sheriff, I get on the phone with the lieutenant. This is recently, and he's like, "Well, you know, um, you didn't know the difference between the serial number and the caliber." I said, "Well, I, it's not that I didn't know the difference between the serial number and the caliber. I didn't, I didn't even." think it made a difference at that point and i for some reason i thought because the gun is registered to me yeah it goes to the doj yeah i would have thought that it was updated you know you see the gun is also reported stolen the old one i didn't think that i kind of thought it all worked together and he was like well that's concerning enough for me to remove it the fact that you don't know i said i went to school for electrical engineering i'm no dummy you know like buddy i composed myself like 99.9 percent of people wouldn't you, there's a video of me composing myself mm-hmm. as a good CCW holder in action. Right. You're going to tell me that you're now going to take it away because I told you over the phone that I thought the serial number automatically updated, like mm-hmm. with with the app through the Department of Justice. Who, who is who's who made the call? You, uh, the sheriff Luna and some woman April Tardy. Okay, so these two people made this call. Made this call. Yeah. Let me ask you a question: Was this a CCW incident? No. It was on my property. It was actually in my doorway. Think about that. Okay. That's so another thing. Yeah. Why why did the, your CCW get in the question then? Well, we're gonna go we're going to, we're gonna end up in a litigation, so we'll mm-hmm. we're all gonna find out. They're gonna have to explain property. themselves. Yeah. You, yeah, you're on your private property. Yeah. You're you're prote- <laughs> Yeah, dude. I, I'm sitting over here kind of fuming. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Policymakers, government, they at the end of the day, you can't trust them, right? And like I said, I'll say it again. Policymakers want to kill you because at the end of the day, they're going to tell you, hey, we know you just got into this life or death situation. We know that we limited how many rounds that we mm-hmm. consider to be necessary for your protection. Now we're going to go ahead and strip you of your Second Amendment and being able to protect you and those that you love. Everything else I'm going to say probably would be just beep, 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 beep. But <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I feel for you. I really do. And if there's anything we can do, let us know. Right? Hopefully just, we're just, getting the word out. Throwing it out there. Yeah. And, and, and there's... Uh, are there any arrests made? No. That's, that's the other thing. Yeah. I want to talk about the mm. after action here, right? So, yeah. so all right. So, now we've gotten to, to they, they revoked your concealed carry. Yeah, that's, that's real smart here. And now, where are these guys? Well, I can't give out too much from yeah. what I've, I've It's an learned. active investigation. Yeah, it's active yeah. investigation. But they're not, they're not arrested. How about and that? Th- and that's, that's a concerning thing is that, guys, if you look up some of these cases that went on recently, the kid who killed the kid outside of Boston over last year, he was arrested six times in 14 months for mm. different robberies, or five or six times. On those arrests, he was arrested for five robberies, four robberies, six armed, armed robberies. He was about to get jo- He was going through the process of going through court for like 30-something armed robberies, and he's still let out on bail. Mm-hmm. What so, are we doing? So it's the um, – I know a lot of people always attack cops, and as I said – inherently most of them are good honest people they do their job as best as they as best as they can it's the da bro oh yeah that's not it's bro. not the police yeah, department it's, it's not the police we don't department. we don't have a justice system in this yeah. in this country we have a legal yeah. system yeah. all right at the end of the day and you, we got these repeat offenders that are just going to keep doing what they want to do because they know the system they get they game it yeah. right they they know what they can do in order to get back out on the street and keep doing the same things that they're going to keep yeah. on doing right so they, they people want to talk about removing guns from the street guns no. aren't the problem no yeah. and, you know the, our, our legal system Do you want me to tell you what the problem, problem is tell me is is that so they're running them consecutive mm-hmm. so basically if one not consecutive uh whatever they would when they combine the case so if you get arrested for an armed robbery and you get out and you get arrested on another armed robbery a month later and you get out and three or four more times you do it now the case gets pushed back you have you get a legal aid or attorney and you have five armed robberies you're getting charged with they just Put them together to one. Yeah. It here's, a, here's a bail ruined, system, yeah. right? You do an armed robbery, that's a condition, right? You know, you're not a threat to property, a threat to public and all that stuff. Here's your bail, $20,000, whatever you pay, you get out. And then you get arrested again for some violent crime, whatever it is. You are obviously in violation of that bail. And now you've got another charge. You get another bail, uh, but probably much higher because, you know, it's one of your rights. You get it. And then if you do it again... You don't get a bail. That's up to the judge. Yeah. Or maybe in, even on the second one, you don't get a bail. Depends obviously on the crime, but you do five felonies separate, and you're still let out. 
Okay, I mean, it doesn't take a genius to kind of figure this out. What's the yeah. problem here? So, yeah. so people yeah. know now. So guys who are carrying guns know. Well, the reason why the shootings in New York is because they're not arresting people with guns, and it happens because it's a crime opportunity. If you, if me and you have a problem, mm. and you have to run and get a gun and come back, you're probably not going to do it. But if it's on you, because you're not concerned with getting arrested, but mm-hmm. well, you're going to use it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So if I'm running around, I might just these guys. They they came with no gloves. They came with extra magazines which tells me they might not have even been looking to do the crime, but it was they seen me, it was Just opportunity, and they followed me and said, let's get him now. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because there's no reason they would have came in without gloves unless they just jumped at the opposite. See, that was the other question I was going to ask is, did you think that this was premeditated? Because it seemed like it was no. so, like the, the opportunity was just so perfect, right? Because, you know, did they sit outside and wait, you know, for you to pull up? Or did they just happen to drive by, see that you pull up? had you know, And they're like, oh, let's get him. He's right there. I, don't, I haven't really thought too much into it because I just think if I... If I go down that rabbit hole, I'll yeah. drive myself nuts. Sure, I'd rather sure. just go down the rabbit hole of training more. Oh, oh. yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Be in the mindset of I training am a target. More. I am a target. It's, oh, it's, absolutely. It's, it's, it's sad we have to live that way, but it's the, <clears throat> it's the truth and the reality of the well, situation. In certain states, you really do have to live that way. Yeah. Because as much as law enforcement may want to protect you, and they're the best, but you have these policymakers that are <clears throat> this this this, this guy this guy gets going, he's got to get out. And, and I don't care if you're part of the progressive movement. Let's see progress. Yeah. Let's not see this guy who's coming yeah. in. You see what he did to San Francisco. San mm-hmm. Francisco's never going to come back. No. I don't gone. care what anybody says. Unless it's done. the uh, Chinese president come here, then it'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, five then they'll clean it up for five minutes. Yeah. 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 But it is done. Yeah, exactly. It, the, the San Francisco in 2010, when it was the highest price per square foot in the country, it was a beautiful place. The, the full house era mm-hmm. will probably be around the same age. Of yeah. you seen, I'm born and raised in the Bronx, where you'd watch Full House, you're like, wow, that is nice. Nice. Yeah. That looks nice. Mm-hmm. Now you see San Francisco, you'd have somebody exposing himself to her walking out of the house. With a needle maybe, in the arm, taking a shit, too. And maybe yeah. taking a shit in, front, in their front yard and throwing it at Joey. Hey, hey, it's their home. Yeah. They're allowed to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Their home is the city. So that's why it's okay for them to defecate exactly. in it. Right, right. Isn't that Dude, something somebody said? Yeah. I, I got two questions for you, man. Number one is going to be very quick. And number two, a little bit bigger. Whoa. That is normally bigger. <laughs> but anyways, two questions real quick. Why did they run away? That's a pretty obvious question. Because I shot at them. Exactly. Yeah. Because you were armed with something to protect yourself. Number two, if you didn't have a gun on you at that time, be honest. We're on, in court and I'm asking you in front of the jury, let's say. What do you think was going to happen? Be honest with me. Well, I would have still fought it out, but looking at what they how they were shooting and turning around and shooting as they were even running because yeah. they could have just ran without shooting back yeah they wanted to shoot me yes yeah i mean they were gonna shoot me you you believe they were gonna shoot uh, you and your family uh you want to know why a year ago a friend of mine that yeah. came out here to visit was by sunset on sunset off hollywood boulevard yeah got out of his car he had a nice watch on some guys ran up to rob him and he just said no and he started to jog away, thinking that that was good enough. They yeah. shot him. Mm-hmm. They shot him in the ass, in his lower back, and his, in his hamstring. And he literally fell down and turned around and said, are you kidding me? Yep. And was like, really? You shot me? And like turned around. Like he almost couldn't blame him. This guy, this is a, guy, yeah. this is a tough guy. You yeah. know what I mean, who's been around. He's, he's did some time. Well, like, he just took three shots and just turned around and said, are you kidding me? <laughs> he, 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 he said, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I had gotten shot. I, I like... And the guy said, you're lucky I didn't kill you, and took his watch and left. That guy was arrested a couple months later on a homicide. How about that? It's insane. because So I knew that for them to shoot me, it's not like they're, they're risking going to jail for the rest of their life, and they're like, oh, let's not shoot him. They're like, this guy's throat at me? Shoot him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why not? They're not going to arrest us. We're going to get away with this. So I don't think that their intention was even to hurt me. I just think that they don't give a shit. And it's we go back to that ego yeah. thing. Oh, you're going to stand up to me? No, you're not. Pop. Yeah. yeah. It goes back to the and ego thing even when we were talking about law enforcement. And, yeah. and I'll, anybody who's listening, I'm just going to give, I'm not giving any advice. This is my personal opinion, and we may differ here. I'm never going to take the good intentions of a bad guy into account no. and base my response according to that. It's always and always, always going to be their bad intentions. So you got a gun knife, whatever, you're coming at me, the good intention is like, oh, he doesn't have any, he's not probably going to shoot me, he just he, wants he, my wallet. He just needs some bread. Bad intention is, he's going to pop me in the head, kill my family, and then take my wallet. 
That's how I'm going to always react. Always bad intention. The Supreme Court ruled on this. Law enforcement. This is for law enforcement. Law enforcement officers never have to take the uh, good intention of a bad guy and react. They are allowed to take the bad intention. Well, they have to. Guy. Exactly. You have because to. the the outcome. You want to gamble? Yeah. The outcome of the good intention is horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's a charitable assumption. Yeah. So you want to give somebody the charitable assumption that they're gonna do this. At work, what they came in mm. late, give them a charitable assumption. Mm. They, they 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 took long on lunch. They're crying in the office. Yeah. Charitable assumption. They're not doing their work. Fine. Something's going on. But somebody run up to you a gun. There's no charitable assumption. Yeah, no, nah, you're so. done there. You're trying you're to kill done. me. Uh, let's leave that part out. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, listen. They know who they are. It's also a ring of other people. They did. They they came back. So. They came back that night to pick up their brass and look for the magazine. Wait, oh, wait, 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 and the security was inside the yard, but it was dark at that point. And this kid comes walking up with a hoodie on. He's looking around on the floor. As he's walking, he's just looking down. And the guy's like, yo, what are you doing? It's like 1040-something at night now. The shooting happened at 729. And he goes to walk to the front of the yard just to approach the guy. And he starts, he puts his hood on, starts walking fast. He says, yo, yo, yo. And the kid just takes off running. So the security jumps in <clears throat> the car right there, flies around the corner, there's a black, there's a uh, charcoal gray or a green, char or a green. I, they couldn't really tell what it was. Charger around the corner, no plates, lights off, kid hops in it, it peels off. What kind, what kind of car was it that they hopped into <clears throat> when they, after they shot at you? I'm not positive. I'm, I have to look back at the video. Is it a Charger or something else? Huh. But when I told the detective, when, he came, when I told the cop, when he came back, he's like, oh, yeah, that's them. Yeah. Like as if, like, oh, yeah, it's a crew of people. We know who they are. Yeah. Like they didn't doing it and went on to the new cars they have, so they came because they did drop magazines, full loaded magazines. <laughs> so they had it and they must yeah. have had it in their pocket and, and dropped it. Probably it. fell out. Yeah. Neither of them had gloves on. They probably like let's go back and see because the cops were only there for like maybe forty minutes, so they were in and out. So they might have just been driving by and be like, "Oh my god, there's like yeah. no yellow tape." Like this right. guy might not even call the cops. Yeah. Send this little kid around the block to go do it, and they're not charging juveniles here. So why not send a little 15, yeah, 16 he has nothing kid. to lose. Yeah. Do you know the ages risk. of these people? I know they see oh, no, yeah. cops know. The, 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 front, the first guy who came, he was he definitely was no kid. You yeah. know? Adult. Yeah. But ultimately, they came back, and even the next day, there was a bunch of kids on scooters looking through up the block. And my neighbor called me and said, this is like a lot of kids on the birds – Mm -hmm. Like you, like looking for something, you could see something going on. Not kids, teenagers. So I was like, let's go for a walk. What did I find? I found the kid's hoodie and his mask. Called the cops. They came, picked it up. I didn't touch it. It was thrown to the side, and I was like, and my friend who's a federal agent came, and he was like, yo, we got to find that gun because not even to find the gun for the crime, they probably dropped the loaded gun, and that kid is gonna find it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's yeah, right. Let's look. It, yeah, yeah. So I had the whole thing out there, but then when I seeing the cameras of the kids on the screws, I was like, they definitely came and found the gun. Because that kid dropped the gun. Yeah. So they left the second kid behind and drove. When the first kid jumped in the car, they drove off and they left the second kid because we have video footage that's, of him running. And that's when he stripped off his identifiable. He, he went around the block, stripped off his stuff, dumped it, and they have videos of him jogging blocks away. But I'm like, guys, they're coming back because they're brazen enough to believe that you will not catch them. Yeah. You know, Not yeah. that you don't have the ability to catch them, but you don't have the support. Robbery and homicide should have picked this case up. Mm -hmm. It is a robbery attempted homicide. It is within yeah. the jurisdiction. The captain of the police department who texted me for Thanksgiving, he's trying his best, Captain Aaron Ponce. He, he's a good guy. He said, Vince, I went to them four times to pick this case up. They're not picking They're the not case picking up. up. You know? And we're not giving the support. Gascon is not, does not want to arrest these guys. They will more likely want to arrest you mm -hmm. than they want to arrest these guys. Yeah. And... I was on a uh, city council meeting over Zoom, and they had the audacity, knowing I was on the call, to say how the numbers of robbers have lowered statistically. Because you're said, not charging anybody. Yeah, yeah, of course not. Why? If you're not arresting nobody, yeah. this is not a robbery. Right. It didn't happen. And I'm like, did you really say that out loud? Yeah. I, I asked 
one of the people on the call, the one that prosecutes, I was like, did you really say that out loud in front of everybody? Are you kidding me? They're trying to make a mockery of you. So the local news now, I don't know if anybody's noticed since my case has happened, every single day on the news, it is robbery, attempted robbery, storm Good, agent. I'm glad they're picking Good. them up. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. mind-blowing, honestly. So have you been interviewed by them or no? Yeah, nice. a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, all over Fox. Um, every news anchor I spoke to said, no, like we are pushing this we, more. Literally, now that's what we're doing because here people at need too. to know. And now all of a sudden, Gascon put out a statement about we're gonna all these like smash and grab robbers. Mm. He's like they're gonna run outside to the police soon, and they need to be arrested now, now no. because election season is coming. Oh, how about you're that? You're gonna do that's it. Convenient. Yeah. Like after you, you actually decriminalized it. You decriminalized rape, where it's not a violent crime. You've decriminalized this anything under uh, X amount of money, whatever it is. And then you can't even if you try to stop these smash and grab robbers that run into the store. You get arrested. Yeah, you're held liable. Oh, that's yeah. right. You're right. They'll charge you. No mm. problem. Which is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is almost insane. And I like. I don't even feel comfortable going to the Grove with my wife, which is honestly the best place in the world. This guy Rick Caruso builds the yeah. best places in the world. Literally, the Grove is the Disneyland for adults. Like, mm. if you have a small child, you walk around the Grove. It's the nicest place in the world. You can't even go there because you don't know forty people are gonna run in here and just start robbing stores. And what's next? They're getting away with the stores. Why not rob a guy that's standing there? That's right. right. Why not rob a family standing there? What, what is going to happen to change the public perception? It's, it's me getting shot at now, speaking up, saying, hey, I don't think so. Maybe when they come back and kill me the next time and make me a statistic, then people like you yeah. guys and everybody are like, no, we met this guy. Mm -hmm. Now he's dead. Right. You know what I mean? Is that what's going to have to happen for these policymakers to change? And then it's going to be a nightmare you know, after that. But Damn. they don't care. Right. They don't they just want statistics. You know, well, I, first of all, I I applaud you for making your voice heard too, right? Um uh, I know the NRA has picked you up yeah. and, and you guys are working together and stuff, which is great. You know, that's yeah. that's cool. I know the NRA gets a little bit of pushback about, you know, like, hey, do you guys what what do you guys actually do for our second yeah. amendment rights things like that? But I think they have their place, you know. Of course, there's other organizations like Gun Owners of America, Firearms Policy Coalition, things like that that do great stuff too. And it's great that these organizations are like, hey, it's it's sad that they have to exist when you think about it yeah. because the second amendment is under constant attack, constant Dude. attack. And it's great that these organizations do exist and then elevate voices like yours. Uh, so that way these stories get heard. And then it, and it, like the actual crime is one thing, but we're hearing about all the behind the scenes stuff. Government will fail you. Policymakers will fail you at the end of the day. And it comes down to you and what you're capable of and what you're going to make yourself capable of when it comes to protecting what you care and love about. Because at the end of the day, you're not looking to get into a fight, right? You weren't, you were not, when these guys approached you, you weren't looking to kill, you right? Were at home. You, were, you were at home looking to water your plants. Yeah. Right? It's, you, not, it's you, not a guy coming home drunk outside of a club getting yeah. a shootout or a father coming home at one o'clock in the morning yeah. drinking with his buddies. I was thinking about watering my plants, drinking tea. At your own property. At after home. therapy. Yeah. Talking about being yeah. disarmed. It was as feminine as a, you know, if this was an opportunity to come out of the closet, it would have been right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Literally. Like, if Trust me, you came out when you yeah. moved to California. Yeah. I'm if there, uh, if there was a time for me to be as, as feminine as possible, it was yeah. at that moment, I was not looking for a fight. Mm -hmm. I want peace. Yeah. I really do. I want peace in my heart. I, I've come from a, a chaotic background. My father has not fell short of causing chaos in our lives. Rest his soul, he did the best he could, you know, but my life got better because I worked for it. Mm -hmm. I got to where I am because I worked for it. I worked very hard to go from the Bronx, New York, from nothing to be where I'm at and to watch this government and watch these people strip me of my rights, no way. Yeah. I will mm -hmm. fight tooth and nail against this guy, Luna, against this prosecutor, against everybody. I'm going to be a nightmare for them to deal with. And they... They're talking about trying to disparage me and doing different things to discredit me and other stuff. They're like trying to send me warnings for other people. Good, warn me. Come, mm. come for me. Watch. Yeah. I have nothing to lose at this point. Yeah. Everybody like one is like, what's the worst? I'll just move back to the Bronx. Yeah. I'll, I'll move back and, and, and I'll be comfortable. You know, there, there are other states out there though that yeah. don't have limited capacities yeah. and also there's yeah. other, there's other states too that actually have constitutional carry. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, so I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. You know, you don't have to keep going to these other states, but that's something too. That, I mean, we're, we're I know you got to get going here shortly. And that's something else we can talk about. Are people people see how bad yeah. the policies are in some of these other states? They leave these states, go to other states that are actually free, and then they start yeah. voting for the same bullshit that they left. No, but that's, that's right. You know? Yeah, yeah, and I understand people want progress and people the progressive movement and other things like that. I get it. I, I see both sides of the coin. 
Absolutely. But at some point, common sense is politics. Yeah. Wake up. Californians need to wake up. This is a joke. Like I had the same friends who like will push back on homelessness, live in Venice, super liberal friends. And I'm like, oh, it only affects you. Now that they try to break in your garage, now you're annoyed about it. Now Why don't you know. go outside and let the guy live in your house? Yeah. yeah. Why don't you go give back? Yeah. And all these people who march and they, and they protest and they do these things, Fine, if you believe in something, but then give back. Mm -hmm. I'm the only one no. out of all these people, except what Dan Fleshman is my partner on my charity with my wife. This guy gives back more than anybody I know. And he probably gets viewed as this entrepreneur, successful man with privilege, blah, blah, blah. No, this guy gives back more than anybody. He's helped me build my charity up in the last 10 years so much. We're going on a 10-city tour for toy drives. I'm not... And, and I'm f not fighting with my wife about it, but she's uneasy because now I'm leaving for 17 days to go to 10 different cities to do big toy drives to give back to. Um, we'll make sure that this, you know, like yeah. you know, we're not going to give dates or anything like that. We're going to make sure that, you know, operational security is at play here, yeah. you know, because already you, you see the crime and everything like that. Um, uh, so we won't, you know, we're not going to air dates or. No, yeah. Else, but I mean, so I have armed security yeah. outside anyway, but. Oh, good. Okay. But ultimately. No evil, no savages are going to stop me from giving back. The people we give back to in these disenfranchised communities are not. It could be same people that are out doing stuff, but these people also see me and be like, you know, this guy doesn't have to do this. Mm -hmm. This guy, I'm mostly in a Hispanic area downtown that I work in, and I'm an Italian guy. They're like, he's not from our area. He's not even from this state, yeah. and he chooses to give back here. Why? Because I care. Yeah. yeah. Because it's part of being a, a fucking human. One on one mm -hmm. is giving back. Yeah. And all these people, these progressive people that want to give back, during the whole COVID rights, we did uh, a day we raised a bunch of money and got a bunch of resources for uh, three black-owned charities. All the same loud, outspeaking people that I'm friends mm -hmm. with that were protesting, doing wild stuff. None of them showed up. How about that? None of them yeah. gave back. You know who the gave hypocrisy. back? The same people who always come. Yeah. The people who have... An oath inside that they want to give back. Yeah. They give back on Facebook, retweet or Twitter. They, they, they do their virtue things. signaling yeah. and bullshit like that. Let man. Me so, share this. so share what what is your charity? It's called Trina's Kids Foundation. My mother's name was Trina. My mother's my late mother. So I give back to kids in disenfranchised areas through different groups. It's really effectively affecting. It's targeting kids affected by drug abuse. Okay, yeah. not that they're using drugs, but most of these areas because it's so broad. When you're in a Unpopulated, a, a low-income area, a impoverished area. Your, your mother, or your father, or your uncle, or something put you in that position, yeah. or you're living with an aunt, and someone's a, a drinker or a drug addict. It's just you're going to be more exposed to that. And I feel for because that's the way I grew up. Mm -hmm. And you know, my mother is not with me no more, but her name will still ring bells, yeah. and her name will still live with me. And every holiday, from Thanksgiving, Christmas, Backpack Day, Report Card Day, we yeah. do all the Trans Kids Foundation events. And it's, it's part of who I am. What, what a great way to yeah. honor your mother, man. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And that's I don't awesome. want to like spin it away from that, like to like plug it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But people ask like, do you feel like a different type of way now? You feel a little like bitter. Yeah. Like the people ran up. I mean, no, I'm like my, my, my love for humanity, my love for giving yeah. back is not going to stop by these two fucking savages. You realize that like, evil, uh, evil exists, but it's a vast majority of people are good, inherently good I people. I love humanity yeah. so much. Yeah. I want them to actually start standing up for themselves and exercise something beautiful we have in this country called the Second Amendment. Exactly. Yeah. I want you, because, because there's, there's things out there that aren't human. Right, they don't. They don't have the humanity in them anymore. Yeah. They see you as a target and as a as all they see you as potential dollar signs. Like, hey, I want. And you know who's worse than that uh, is the policymakers that are like, oh, he has money. Yeah, he has insurance. Yeah, he could do this. No, I got fucking shot at. Yeah, you know what I mean, like my it's, wife can't go to sleep at night without looking, staring at the cameras on yeah. iPad. Who's like, I'm fine, but it kills me inside. Mm. It, it, it it like it it makes me yeah. want to like <sighs> crawl up in a ball because I'm like. Oh, like I feel for her so much. She's not eating. She's going through it. You know, this is a time we should be enjoying our baby. Right. Preparing to have another baby. And we can't do that now. Oh. You know what I mean? And God forbid yeah. we do that here oh, because man. nobody cares. But the truth is people do care, but the people who care are shunned out. Yeah. Or they're, they're silenced yeah. mm -hmm. by all these other policymakers that are following. Uh, there's way more behind the scenes that we don't even know about. You know what I mean? But- People need to realize it's time to stand the fuck up and the toxic masculinity is bullshit. Right. It's a stupid yeah. term. 
You know what I mean? Yep. It's it's men that need to stand up and women that need to stand up and empower other people also to That's make right. decisions. And men need to yeah. empower the policymakers, the right ones to make decisions. Mm-hmm. Vote correctly. Yeah, vote Seriously. correctly. Yeah. Vote correctly. So let's let's see it off there, man. Again, you, you know you and I talked a little bit about this here. We all talked about it, but from one father to another, I again I pray. Like literally I, I pray about this, that I would have the type of I would be able to have that that mindset that you did to do what you had to do to protect your family. And I think about, like I said, my kids and my fiance. And and you're right. You would have to kill me before I let you step foot in, into my doorway if I was in that situation too. Like, there's no way. There's no way, man. And so I applaud you for yeah. ta- for doing what you could do with the limited resources that the policymakers have enforced on, on you. Right? So you took your limited mag capacity and uh, you, you did what you had to do. Oh, and, and yeah. between God me and you, you man. nothing will stop me from continuing to move forward in my life. Yeah. Not this bullshit agenda, not these naysayers, no. not these people who want to put me down, or not the sheriff's petty attempt to try to discredit me. You know, the sheriff's department in a whole is a bunch of tough, good guys. I wanted to become yeah. a, a sheriff, uh, what was it called when you've come? The, like a cadet? You mean a sheriff's a, deputy? A police officer? No, when you like a reserve. Oh, a reserve Oh, sheriff. reserve yeah. deputy, yeah. Yeah. Reserve deputy, because I wanted to to give back more, and I felt like that would be an opportunity to give back. Right. I think those guys are great. I think LAPD is great. You yeah. know, especially the captain of my division, the guy's the man. He calls me, but it's these other people. Oh, it's yeah. these people that are in these little little positions of power. Yeah. The yeah. ones the ones that can really make a difference. The ones that truly I don't mean to sound like an asshole here matter are the yeah. ones that are over here. Like how how can we how can we skew this number? How can we enforce this agenda? And and why? Usually there's money somewhere involved. If you look at their pockets, I bet they're fucking thick. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somewhere. And that, and that's the problem is that they don't want to hear me. Mm-mm. They don't want to see the guy who oh, actually yeah. defended his father. I mean, the, the father that defended his kid. Yeah. They don't want that, but they, I'm not going anywhere. Mm. Good for I'm going to speak up for this because I, have, I owe it to the rest of the mothers or the fathers. I owe it to the single mothers out there that are struggling, that are coming home feeling yeah. unsafe. I owe it to the fathers that are also struggling because we have a downturn economy that a lot of people are struggling and, and to feel unsafe at your home on top of all the other mm-hmm. things is the thing that's going to push you mm-hmm. over the edge. Yeah. You know? And that is not going to happen. Yeah. Not now. Like people I, have to turn it around. Yeah, like I said, man, you need anything, you can count on classic firearms being there for you, bro. If you are you know, if you ever just you need to you need to vent about something, you got our numbers, yeah. we we got you, man, of course. And Thank you. Yeah, dude, absolutely, man. And uh I've no doubt that you empowered a lot of people with this incident and going out there and talking to us and other folks. I've no doubt that you have empowered thousands of people. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. They, no, or, no. or at least make them see the light. Yeah. Right. Let's at least, and you're helping some of these news medias. Yeah. You, you already said it, you know, like, like these, these people are now are starting to push like, dude, we can't, we can't, we can't hide this anymore. We, dude, can't, we can't ignore the fact that the crime and all yeah. these different crimes is so high. Right. And, and thank God for you, man. I mean, it, sh- it sucks that you were put in the situation that you were in, but at the end of the day, you got to look at all the positive things that have come from it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if it and if it helps one person say, shit, dude, that happened right down the street for me. You know what? I think I am gonna arm up and I think I'm gonna go take a class. That right there, good on you. No, it, ha- good it on does you. it to me. Like I train together, we shoot all the time, and talking to you makes me want to go train more. So uh, you're empowering like, me. I <laughs> promise you you're empowering thousands yeah. of people. Right. So yeah. well Absolutely. thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you for having me on here. Yeah. And and hopefully everyone will, will wake up and realize that you can only really count on yourself and you need to Take the rights we're given as Americans to yeah. arm yourself. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, dude. Thank Absolutely. you guys. Appreciate yeah, so out there. Yeah. Hey guys, get out there, fight, train, exercise that Second Amendment right, just like our friend uh, Vince has. And any social media? You got any yeah. social? Oh media yeah, yeah. Push yeah. Push at Vince Ritchie. At Vince Ritchie. R I C C I. Right. Yep. Yeah. Good, 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 good. So, guys, we'll leave it off there. Uh, yeah. Comment down below your thoughts. Of course, uh, comment down below your next uh, range trip or training that you just signed up yeah. for. <laughs> and uh, we'll leave it off, guys. As always, we appreciate you, your viewership. God bless. And uh, we'll see you next time yeah. at the CF Podcast. Thank you.